Hi, I am Dr. Nicole Vane of Moonlight Beach Dental. And I wanted to do a brief segment just to talk about sleep apnea because it's kind of a very obscure thing, even to most dentists. So uh, I've gone through a series of sleep apnea trainings. Um, it's more complicated than one might think in order to understand how to evaluate the patient and how to evaluate the airway. So there's a variety of ways to go about it, but basically if you had um, any exam in our office, cleaning or consultation, when we look in the back of the throat, we're evaluating the back of the throat to see how much air can get down the airway. We can also use a cone beam to evaluate that, but most of it comes from the patient interview. Um, frequently, uh, the most underdiagnosed class are um, perimenopausal women who or people who've gone through a subtle weight gain, even pregnancy can induce um, someone who's non-apneic to becoming apneic. Now there's two different types of sleep apneas. There's central sleep apnea, where your airway actually stops and you physically stop breathing and struggle to breathe. And then there's obstructive sleep apnea, which is more commonly misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed by the medical community. Essentially, it leads to someone not getting enough air at night their tongue is falling back and occluding their airway, and they are subtly waking up at night throughout the night um, and not getting enough oxygen. So typically, we ask for what's called an Epworth sleepworthiness test, which is just going to evaluate how sleepy you are throughout the day. I mean, frequent questions are like people who fall asleep watching television, people who fall asleep in meetings, people who fall asleep at their computer. There's even people who fall asleep at like stoplights. Like, that's, that's when that's a sign you're really not getting restful sleep. And a lot of people will blame it on their life. Oh, I just have a restless mind. Oh, I'm just busy. Oh, I'm just stressed. And it's most commonly just undiagnosed. If you went to your doctor, they would give you sleeping pills. That's, it's insanity. So really you just need a proper evaluation. Doesn't take long. But to get a conclusive sleep result, you would actually go for a sleep test. Um, here, we can give you a home sleep study, or you could try and get one arranged through your medical insurance. And what that involves is them measuring um, through a pulse oximeter. It measures your oxygen saturation through a finger cuff. There's a chest band that measures your effort to breathe, which um, essentially um, monitors your diaphragm. And then there's a series of other little oxygen monitors that sees how often you're going into what are called hypopneic events, which are subtle, small events that lead to you not breathing. I've seen some as long as 118 seconds. Can you imagine holding your breath for two minutes? And on some people, it was 48 times a night they were having events. No wonder they didn't feel well rested in the morning. So once we get a sleep study back and by, uh, by medical insurance, it has to be evaluated by a sleep physician who says you can have a sleep appliance versus having a CPAP machine. Now CPAP machines are those big forced air machines that fit over your nose, which has forced oxygen up through your airway. So those are for central sleep apneas. For people that can have a mandibular advancement device or for people that are CPAP intolerant, and there's a huge subsection of that. And there's also people who just become non-compliant with their CPAP, or if you're someone who travels a lot for work or for your lifestyle, it's cumbersome to bring all the oxygen tanks and things with you. You can have a mandibular advancement appliance. Now, these are covered by medical insurance. We can assist with the medical billing, but essentially they look like this. There's a couple different versions. There's actually a lot of different versions, um, but these are some of the ones that I like. Um, typically, not as much of the hardware with the hinges. There are different forms of this, but the general concept is just that it's going to keep your lower jaw positioned forward so that your tongue doesn't fall back at night. We do have a live patient segment where you can just watch that following this, where you can see what it, someone describes it actually feels like to wear one. So basically the, the breakdown is you would come in, I would ask you a lot of questions if I thought you were someone who might be struggling with sleep apnea. It's shocking to me how many people do have it. Um, we would get a sleep test arranged for you. And then once we get those results back, we would attempt to pre-authorize your medical insurance. Um, and then we would get you fitted for an appliance. So the whole process can be very streamlined and efficient. 
and it's amazing to see how much we can help people. Um, sleep apnea is a huge silent killer in a lot of people. And it's also something that leads to a lot of dysfunction in people's lives. When you are so fatigued that you can't actually keep a job or keep good relationships because you're not feeling like yourself when you're not able to get enough oxygen all the time and you're just absolutely run down. So I'd love to talk to you more about it. If you ever have questions, uh, feel free to ask me when you're next in the office.